This is part three of the lecture on equilibrium, and it's just concerned with a couple of definitions. Okay, there are actually three types of equilibrium. Each of these types is defined in terms of a small amount of force that's exerted upon an object that's in equilibrium. Each is defined in terms of a small amount of force that is exerted. originally in an equilibrium position. Okay, the first of these definitions, the first of these scenarios is referred to as neutral equilibrium. An object is considered to be in neutral equilibrium, where if you exert a small amount of force upon that object, it remains in neutral equilibrium. Okay, that sounds a little bit strange, but here's basically what I mean by that. I'll use my box here to illustrate. Right now, there are just two forces exerted upon the box, normal force upwards and mg downwards, and they just cancel each other out. And now I'm going to go ahead and exert a small amount of force on the box like so. And it remains exactly as it was. It moved a little bit, of course. But after I let go of it, it remains in its equilibrium position exactly as it was a few moments ago. That's what's referred to as neutral equilibrium. Okay, and then we have what is referred to as stable and unstable equilibrium. Okay, now an object is in stable equilibrium, where if I exert a small amount of force on it, it returns or restores to its original position. So for example, once again, I'll use the box here to illustrate. Take the box and tilt it like this a little bit and then let go of it. And it returns to its equilibrium position as it was a moment ago. That's referred to as stable equilibrium. So let me illustrate here in terms of a simple drawing. Okay, so I have here this example box. Okay, here's the box like this. Right here in the geometric center, we'll say is its center of mass. Right here is mg, and then the normal force goes upwards through the center of mass like so, here in blue. And then of course those two forces just cancel out. And then what I did was I took the box and I tipped it a little bit to the side. But when I did, the center of mass is still going to be on the left-hand side of the pivot, such that it then looks like this. Like so. So right there, we'll think of that now as an axis of rotation. Okay, here's the geometrical center, we'll say, of the box, like so. So there's its center of mass. And then right here, for example, is mg straight downwards. Okay, now in this case, the normal force is going to be exerted upwards from this point right here. Like so. Notice that the normal force is now off the center of mass, and it's also applied right here at the axis of rotation. There is no torque exerted upon the box due to the normal force, because there's no moment arm in R cross F because the force is applied at the axis, but there is going to be a torque exerted due to gravity. This is going to be an example of what is called a restoring torque. It restores the object back to its original equilibrium position. So right here is a moment arm associated with the gravitational force vector. We'll just call it R, like so. And then we have mg straight downwards, like so. And then there's some angle here, just call it theta, you give it a name. But now if you do R cross F, you end up with a torque vector that's out of the board. Like 
So that's going to be a restoring torque because ultimately it's going to cause an angular acceleration like that, and then the box is going to return to its original equilibrium condition. That's why it's referred to as stable equilibrium. So you disturb it a little bit, but boom, it just restores back to its original configuration. So gravity exerts restoring torque. Now this is the situation involving stable equilibrium where the center of mass is above the axis of rotation. If the center of mass is below the axis of rotation, then any force that you exert upon the object to disturb it will restore it back to equilibrium. You will always be in stable equilibrium. Let me illustrate that here in the following way. I'm going to take this hoop, for example, and I'm going to position it here on my attachment. So let me reposition uh, my phone. So bear with me here while I do this. Like so. Okay, and then let me go ahead and hang this like that. Okay, so right here is going to be the attachment. That's going to be the axis of rotation. Now the center of mass, like so, is below the axis of rotation. So then, therefore, if the center of mass is below the axis of, of rotation, regardless of how I disturb this to this side or to this side, and it doesn't matter how much I do, ultimately then you're going to have a restoring torque, which then tries to bring the object back to its equilibrium position. When you have the point of attachment here, the axis of rotation above the center of mass, and then disturb the hoop as I've done, notice the type of motion that it undergoes. It executes simple harmonic motion. This is a situation that is referred to as a physical pendulum. We'll see this in the next unit. Let me go ahead and reposition my phone back. Like so. Okay, so still for stable equilibrium, okay, now what we do is we use my example here involving this hoop, like so, where right here is the axis of rotation and then right here is the center of mass. So then I disturb it to the side like so, Here's the axis, and here's the center of mass. Now let me go ahead and draw in the weight, mg like so. And then right here, for example, is a moment arm, r. So I've got my moment arm like this, and I've got mg like this. There's some angle here, call it theta. And now you do r cross f. When you do, you get a torque vector into the board in this case, like so. But that's going to give us an angular acceleration in this direction. So then therefore it's going to try to return to its original equilibrium condition. Therefore it's once again in stable equilibrium. An object that's positioned such that the center of mass is below the axis of rotation is always going to be in stable equilibrium. And when you disturb it, it executes simple harmonic motion. My hoop, by the way, is actually still oscillating right now, even after a couple of minutes after I've disturbed it. Okay, now let me go ahead and erase this and illustrate the third type of equilibrium. And I'll do so with my box once again. Okay, this third type of equilibrium is referred to as unstable equilibrium. Okay, once again, you exert a small amount of force on an object in equilibrium, but this force then forces it into a new equilibrium state. So what I'm going to do is take my box here to illustrate once again, and now I'm going to tip it like this. I'm going to tip it like this, such that the center of mass is now in that side of the axis of rotation. And then let go of it, and it now achieves a new equilibrium state. That's what's referred to as unstable equilibrium. So, to illustrate, once again, here's my box, like so. Okay, here's the center of mass. Initially, you've got the weight downwards. You've got the normal force, like so, through the center of mass upwards. that, but then I disturb it to the side and I disturb it to the side a lot. Say like so. And now I disturb it, sets it right here, we'll say, is the center of mass. And then therefore you have a gravitational force vector like this. 
This point right here is the axis of rotation, and then you've got the normal force upwards from that point, like so. Once again, there's no torque due to the normal force. There's no moment arm in R cross F, but now we do have a moment arm right here associated with the gravitational force vector. Once again, just call it R here off to the side. Here's MG, there's some angle between them. And now we do R cross F, and you end up with a torque vector into the board. And then notice that this torque vector is gonna cause an angular acceleration in that direction. So in other words, the box is gonna tip over. <laughs> and therefore, it just looks like this. Like so, and it's now in a new equilibrium state. That's why this is referred to as unstable equilibrium, okay? One other subtlety, by the way, about all of this is understanding, for example, say right here, when the object is in neutral equilibrium, exactly why the normal force must be passing through the center of mass. Okay, here's an easy way to understand that. I'll use the box here to illustrate once again. Okay, what I'm gonna do is position the box like this, such that it's overhanging the lip of the desk a little bit. So when I do, that situation looks like this. Let's say like so. Okay, and I'm positioning my box here such that the center of mass, the geometrical center of the box, is not out over the edge of the desk. So then therefore, the force vectors have to look like this. You have mg like this, and then the normal force straight up like so, through the center of mass. If those force vectors were offset from each other in some manner, like in my equilibrium, unstable and stable equilibrium diagrams from a few minutes ago, then one of those forces would exert a torque, ultimately causing the box to rotate in some manner. That's not the case when the object is in neutral equilibrium, therefore the normal force must be passing through the center of mass. However, if I push the box out such that the center of mass is out over the lip of the desk like so, then it rotates and falls to the desk. So that situation then has to look like this. Okay, so now let me kind of exaggerate it like that. And then right here is the center of mass. So then therefore you have the gravitational force vector like this. Okay, there's no surface over here to exert a normal force upwards. So then therefore the box immediately begins to tip over. Normal force is now right here. This is the axis of rotation. And then right here is a moment arm associated with the gravitational force vector. So you've got a moment arm like so, here's the gravitational force vector. Now you do R cross F like so, you end up with a torque into the board, and then therefore, boom, the whole thing rotates and tips over in this direction, like so. So once again, these different types of equilibrium here are just definitions, and it has to do with, is the box gonna tip over in one direction or the other? That's basically the easiest way of thinking of it. Okay, that concludes the lectures on equilibrium, and this also concludes this large unit on rotations.